Hello and welcome to Your Damn Jets. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is rant. So the language may get spicy at some point. Uh, you've been warned. Um, and I'm gonna talk about second opinions. So it's a general health topic. It's not necessarily about lymphomas in, in particular. Um, so I was reading Reddit this morning and somebody posted a story about the, their father and the fact that the insurance uh, denied the test and, and the and then the father's disease has progressed and now they're they're in a pickle. Uh, that's not fun to read um, by any means. Uh, and you know I gave him a response and but my own experience is a good illustration of how. If if you get a diagnosis that you don't like, or if you get even a refusal from an insurance company, you may need to get a second opinion um, to get things straightened out. If I had not gotten a second opinion when I had the symptoms that cause that were caused by my lymphoma, I would not be talking right now. I would be dead, and I mean this literally. I would be dead. But. Initially, I was misdiagnosed with MS, and the neurologist, in my opinion, was not very convincing, and they had tests done on me, and some of the tests did not reflect how it should be for somebody with MS, and that created a doubt in my mind, and I saw the second opinion, and at first, this doctor didn't want me to get a second opinion. It was His word was the law. Uh, I've read reviews of him online, and people talk about the God complex. Uh, I think this is accurate, an accurate description of how badly this guy thinks. Um, so he thought his, his opinion was the final word, but in the span of two sentences, he changed his mind and realized that I should get the second opinion, because either it could confirm his opinion, or if it did not confirm his opinion, but suggested another disease than MS, and it was right, then, I, you know, chances are that I would be saved instead of dying. So there's no good outcome for a doctor to refuse to give you, to allow you to have a second opinion. And then he did my doctor's, my neurologist's referral to get the second opinion at Johns Hopkins because Johns Hopkins doesn't just let everybody just go there and get second opinions. Unfortunately, you have people who are hypochondriacs and, uh, you know, they don't have any reason to think they have MS, but they will go to Johns Hopkins and say, well, I have this, 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 this and that, and I think I have MS. Um, for second opinions, they want to have a referral from someone so that it's not just the, the odd bozo off the street who decides to, to, to get uh, a second opinion from Johns Hopkins. And those people, the bozos, who may not be bozos after all because they have real symptoms like I did. I had visual symptoms at first. It was not classical PCNS lymphoma. It was not classical anything in my case. Um, so they may turn out to be right about it, but they need to see someone else before they go to Johns Hopkins. Um, so yeah, I was misdiagnosed with MS and I saw the second opinion and the second opinion came and the, the, the MS specialist at Johns Hopkins said, this is not MS. I don't know what it is, but it is not MS. It's your case is atypical of MS. Um, and they initially thought it was vascular, so I had a lot of vascular tests, and the vascular tests all came back clean, which I'm happy to to know that, you know, they, they, they did special MRIs of my brain and everything, and they were able to see the, the walls of the arteries and the veins in my brain, and they didn't see any problem there, so I'm happy about that. You know, my brain is good, my arteries are good, um, but... Uh, you know, ultimately the vascular um, hypothesis didn't pan out. It was, I had a lymphoma. They had to do a brain biopsy and find a lymphoma. Eventually I went to Inova and they said, well, you probably have a primary sinus lymphoma. And they were right. 
So the second opinion literally saved my life because because they misdiagnosed me with MS at first when I had the lymphoma. It saved my life, and I'm not using this lightly. Um, it saved my life uh, for multiple, and I, I'm saying that for multiple reasons. Once, first of all, I looked, I read articles, scientific articles about PCS lymphoma, and if you look at the tables that they have for people who are not treated for PCS lymphoma, the the life expectancy is months. And I was months into my PCNS lymphoma. It started at the beginning of 2020, and I was diagnosed in November of 2020. So I was close to death. Because of that, 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 that I have a life expectancy of months. Um, the other thing is that Johns Hopkins, when they diagnosed me on the November 17th, they didn't discharge me and, and say, well, you can have a cup of coffee with your oncologist and figure out what your treatment is going to be. They rolled me directly from the biopsy from neurology. I was in neurology from the brain biopsy. They rolled me from the biopsy to oncology right away to start treatment. There was no time to start blathering about this or that and... It was, you're advanced enough that you need treatment now, not in two months. Uh, and I read stories of people sometimes who have lymphomas and, you know, they're diagnosed and then they can talk with their oncologist and decide what treatment they're going to get. It was not at all my experience. My experience was, oh, you have lymphoma, now, now come for treatment, <laughs> like like this. You know, my oncologist came into my room and we talked, but... It, it was, I didn't have any span of time to really think about it. And maybe it was a blessing after all. I was, I was not, you know, I, my mental capabilities were good at that time, but it's like it went so fast that I didn't have time to, to kind of worry about treatment or I just went from diagnosis to treatment right away. Um, so that's the second thing that makes me think I was close to death. And the third thing, thing that makes me think I was close to death was that I had at that time my symptoms had gotten pretty bad remember um, if you watch other of my videos I had my vision at the time after diagnosis and just before they started treatment my vision was awful I was seeing everything was blurry on my phone I could only see shapes and I was you know, like I could recognize that this icon was my wife and not my stepdaughter, but that's that's about it. I was just seeing shapes on there. I could not read the phone. If somebody had sent me a text, I would have had to blow it up really big, and it was pretty terrible. And also, the other thing is that I had to walk with a walker before treatment. I had... I, there was no way for me to just stand up and go from point A to point B. I would have fallen on my face. I was too weak. So that's why I think that if I had not sought a second opinion and I had never discovered that I had a lymphoma, I would not be here talking to you. So that's one thing. The other thing is that when they were doing the workups for vascular disease, I was put into contact with the lipid specialist at Johns Hopkins. And the lipid specialist heard my story. He, he, I guess he looked at numbers and stuff. I'm, I'm not sure what he did, but he heard my story and he said, well, right away, right away, we're going to put you on a PCS canine inhibitor because you have high, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. Now, consider that I had been seen by cardiologists before and I had a cardiologist local to my town here uh, who had seen me for five years, and the PCS K9 inhibitors, I think, at the time, had been approved for about five years. So the cardiologist that I was seeing regularly had five years to decide to put me on a PCS K9 inhibitor. But he didn't do it. The lipid specialist at Johns Hopkins did it immediately, almost immediately, but the, um, the cardiologist I had seen for five years didn't do it. And I learned after the fact, because he learned that I was on a PCS can inhibitor, and then he starts to, you know, idiot, he starts telling me like, oh yeah, the PCS can inhibitor, there's paperwork for that, it's very, very hard to get the patients on it, and then, and then, 
what I get from that is that you spend five years thinking it's too hard to get me on a PCS canon inhibitor and that's why my cholesterol right now is okay considering that I have familial hypercalceremia. Okay means that it's high. It could be better. It could be normal. It's not normal. It's, it's a little bit high. It's okay because you have hyper, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. <laughs> I'm going to mess it up. You have familial hypercholesterolemia and you've been... You, and for for a long time, it was like that. For people like me with familial hypocholesterolemia, where you have a gene in your body that just does something to your cholesterol and your body is just producing cholesterol from nothing, <laughs> basically. Um, for a long time, it was like that. that. That's the best you could do for people with familial hypocholesterolemia. You were putting them on statins, on ezetimibe, and you were looking at a cholesterol level and... Considering that they, they had this illness, the numbers were okay. But they were not normal. They were not like my wife's mom. I don't know what my wife's numbers are, actually. She doesn't have a heart problem. But, you know, it was not like a normal person. But once I got started on the PCS cannon inhibitor, and there were some delays because I decided to delay it because of chemo. I didn't want to put that on me on top of chemo. But as soon as I started on the PCS cannon inhibitor... I was back to normal levels, except for the HDL, which we cannot raise with drugs. We should It should be higher, but there's no drug to, to raise the HDL. So this is as good as it gets. But that doctor sat on this information for five years. Like, what am I... So what am I supposed? And this was this was a surprise. This was I didn't know about any PCS canine inhibitors. I was not in the market for that. I was not searching for that. It totally came as a surprise that the lipid specialist at Johns Hopkins put me on that, and I got it. And he had to work also the the guy at Johns Hopkins, the lipid specialist. He had to work for me to get the drug because the first time he submitted the paperwork to the insurance, the insurance said no. I don't know why. I, maybe a comma was missing somewhere. I have no idea why they said no the first time. But what did he do when the insurance said no? He didn't put up his arms and say, oh, well, now you're not going to get the drug because the insurance said no. <laughs> he refiled. I don't know what the insurance, maybe the insurance, there was some information missing or there's an argument that hadn't, I, that hadn't been made. I don't know. I have no clue. But he refiled, and then I got it. And I suppose if the insurance had said no again, he would have refiled the third time until I get it. He, this guy did his work versus my cardiologist over here who was... So, get a second opinion. If things don't go your way... Sometimes, sometimes it's going to be your insurance that is putting up the problem. And I cannot, it's very difficult in the United States to compare insurances because I have my insurance, you have your insurance, this might be a different company. I don't know how they work, I don't know what your plan is. I, sometimes it's the insurance that puts up roadblocks. But sometimes, and this happened at least twice and probably more than that to me, because I don't always remember all the, the events of my life, sometimes I... It's like, um, I'm ranting, and then I don't remember it, and then some time later, somebody's going to say something, and oh, yeah, yeah, that happened. So, I don't know. But, um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes it's going to be the doctor. It's not going to be the insurance company causing the problems. It's going to be your doctor who decides that it's just too hard to fill the paperwork for you, or they or they fill it once and they get the no, and then it dies there because, well, the insurance said no. So it's going to be no. No, you can refile. So if, you know, I, I, I get it. If you have just have the sniffles and you go to the doctor for a cold, and you know, you're probably gonna, not going to need a second opinion. But... If it's anything that is important and that is life-changing, cancer, 
uh, heart disease, um, back problems, things of the sort, and you think that the doctor, you know, that things are not going the way you want, I so strongly suggest getting a second opinion from a different source, a different doctor, and it's worth your while to go to a, a specialist in a good center that is going to take the time and is going to have the resources to fight for you. You know, and the, the guy this morning that said, you know, my father is in the speckle now. I I don't know why the insurance said no at first. I, and I don't know what trick a uh, doctor could have used to get turned a no into a yes. I know one, I know one thing that doctors have done for me. It's like sometimes when the insurance says, well, you cannot go to this place because the, the this outpatient facility is not in our network. I've had doctors just say, okay, next time you're in the hospital, we're going to do it inpatient instead. <laughs> and I don't know that they're saving any money with, that the insurance is saving any money with that solution because I'm still getting the the service from the same place. It's just done inpatient, and I think inpatient costs more than outpatient. Um, so the, the insurance company is not saving anything by doing that. Uh, but you know, some doctors may have more than you know. They have they they know how the system works better than other doctors, and can get the services to their patients better than other doctors. I've had that experience with my cardiologist. That can happen with all kinds of doctors. So uh, you you're going in and going to hear me say that over and over and over and over again. Get if if it's something life changing, get a second opinion. If it's something where the doc, you're not getting the services that you need, get a second opinion. I'm, I'm very keen on second opinions when things are not going the way I want because, again, I would be dead if I didn't do it. Or I wouldn't have the PCS cannon inhibitor and my cholesterol would still be too high. Now it's perfect. Almost. Just the HDL that we cannot raise. But there's nothing we can do about it, and there's no amount of exercise or of, or of or of eating that is going to fix it. So yeah, this was a rant. I didn't have a script today, so I didn't, you know, I wasn't reading anything. It's just a rant about get a second opinion if you need it. It can save your life, literally. Uh, so now that my rant is over, I'm going to say goodbye. Whoops, the hand should be there. I'm going to say goodbye and see you next episode.